Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Debates Among Friends, live on Mixler, under the name Debates Among Friends, and our Facebook page under the same name. This is the inaugural episode of the podcast where we discuss the world of sports, debates on issues, and provide answers for the people. I am known as the professor, and always ready to drop some knowledge is the doctor. Are you ready to be controversial and create some cash tonight, doctor? I am ready, my friend. Well, we got ourselves a full stack tonight, and we're going to start off out there in the quote-unquote armpit of Texas with Houston and discuss the uh, upcoming offseason with Dwight Howard and also their playoff uh, early round exit against the Golden State Warriors. Playoffs. Don't talk about playoffs. So, here's what I was going to tell you. So we can start with Houston. I'm a Houston fan. All of my friends know that very well. But the one thing that just popped up on my Bleacher Report, shout out to Bleacher Report, is that the Rockets are not considering Bickerstaff for the head coaching job, which is music to my ears because anyone who sits Michael Beasley after having such a dominant second half of the season doesn't deserve to be coached. And if you keep playing those bums like Corey Brewer... After going over whatever in April completely, I mean, come on. But I don't like Koei Brewer, though. You said that you liked him. He was a great energy guy. He, he is. the floor really well. I mean, he, he is. was in the shooting But club. when you go over whatever, that changes everything. Your energy is low after you go over whatever. <laughs> Well, I mean, can we make the same argument about, you know, what's happening out there in the Easter Conference semis with uh, Kyle Lowry and his shooting slow? We talked about, you know, we talked about Kyle Lowry, and just to give you a, a piece of that conversation, I said, and I quote, that Kyle Lowry was playing his way into that Ty Lawson status where he'll be on his way out if he doesn't pick it up. I mean, you can't digress this early in your career. Your career. Like, you can't drop this far. Like, this isn't NBA 2K16 or anything. You know, year by year, you can't drop three or four points you know, in your overall rating and expect to still get paid. So hopefully he, he plays better, you know, next game uh, and the rest of the series or the Raptors will be going fishing. Well, they're down 2-0. Uh, they had a pretty good fight uh, their last game against the Miami Heat. And, I mean, they just, you know, couldn't pull it together in overtime. I mean, they're heading back to Miami, and Miami's been rather dominant at home and, I mean, what do you think? This might be a sweep, or do you think that Miami's going to close it out in five? I don't know. It doesn't seem like Miami even closed that game out last night. So, to me, you know, and I would like to get your opinion on this, but it feels like this could be the last year Dwayne Wade is in a Miami Heat uniform because he was so mad yesterday. Easy either he goes or every whoever he had a problem with yesterday goes. I don't know if you – had a chance to witness what I witnessed, but I actually thought the game was over. I actually went and took a shower, and then my wife came and actually said, oh, you know, this game is in overtime, and I was like, I was almost positive that, that this game was, game was over. Yes, and Kyle Lowry hit that half-court heave, uh, completely splash, and brought the game into overtime. I mean... With Dwayne Wade, we're going to go back to Houston uh, right after this. Of course. Um, this is a playoff. We're talking about playoffs, so playoffs. But for Dwayne Wade, I think most of his gripe was against uh, Gordon Dragic because Gordon, even though combined, I believe they scored 50 points, and mm -hmm. I might have to do some number crunch to get some verification, but I believe it's about 50 points. Uh Basically, Dwayne Wade was acting at the point guard in yesterday's game. So I did notice that. he was facilitating or he was just taking it and making his own shots. So, if you just got finished signing a point guard that you paid so much money for. Yeah, he gets paid. Because he's getting paid. He is getting You're paid. You're expecting him to be the floor general. You're expecting him to run the show. Now, in the playoffs, 
you're expecting that same person you paid all this money to to do that. <clears throat> but and and I heard this today during first take, and they said that the Miami Heat, as far as the way that their offense is running, is sort of like how it kinda is in Cleveland, where LeBron James is basically the point forward. I mean, and that's the new way of doing things. And I've I read articles about James Harden doing that, and you know why they didn't pick up certain people. Uh, I think one report had us. I think it might have been Sam Decker who released this on on Twitter, saying that Mike Conley was coming to Houston in the off season, and then there were some comments that suggested that you know him and Harden can't play well together, and then you know some other comments said, well, yeah, because Mike Conley isn't a selfish guy, so it would work. But my thing is with Gordon Dragic, and and this is something that I see with all of my teams, my teams in particular, okay. whether it be Houston or Tampa Bay. Shout out to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, the Bucks, man. What a great, what a great organization. Great job drafting, guys. Um, I noticed that players that used to play for the Houston Rockets or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers always wind up going somewhere to contribute to another organization and contribute well. You look at the playoffs. You got Gordon Dragic and you got Kyle Lowry. Both were on the Houston Rockets at one point in time, and we let them off the hook. So, to me, Gordon Dragic is a great player. Don't get me wrong. Kyle Lowry, he, he's, like I said, on the decline, but he's a, still a pretty good player. Um, why well, do just, you think that his decline is because of just, you know, a shooting slump? Or do you think it might just be because of the pressure? Because they have home advantage. Well, they had home advantage. Yeah. But now well, they don't. Well, see, so yeah, my do you problem. think it's just the pressure of, like, the playoffs and expectations and, you know, the team finally getting out the first round after, what, uh, 2000, whatever? Yeah, but they barely made it out of the first round. And that's, that's where a GM... You know, and the owner has to really come together and say, well, you know, what's working, what's not working. You pay somebody all this money, and, you know, you want them to deliver. And like you said about Drogic, I mean, if you can't deliver in these clutch moments, like, what are we paying you for? You know, because that's what separates stars from superstars. And right now, Kyle Lowry is supposed to be the guy. But you had DeMar DeRozan stepping up, and you've seen what happened at the end of the overtime. I mean... You know, my, even my wife said it's like, oh, he was showboating, and I was just like, you know, I don't know what that was, but it just wasn't the right move. I know the Heat had pressure going last night, but it was just something about it that was just all wrong. And yeah, I, I noticed a lot of uh, uh, timidity. Uh, yeah, it was like, oh, I want the ball. No, 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 I don't want the ball. I don't want the ball. No, no, I want it. I want it. No, you don't want it. I want it. But then nobody wanted it. No yeah. one wanted the ball. Yeah. Like, I mean, let's let's just let's just look at Brad facts. Like, no one wanted the ball. It was crazy. And then they didn't want the ball, and that's why the ball didn't go in the hoop. It it did not not nowhere near the hoop actually. And, like, and I apologize to all the Toronto Raptors fans out there because I know they're out there, but they no might. one wanted the ball. Shout out to Drake. He wanted the ball. I'm not gonna go there. Drake wanted the ball. Well, Drake can't have the ball, so Drake, we're gonna continue on. Drake so, wanted that ball. And speaking but, of, you know, the Houston Rockets, uh, there's been a lot of speculation about Dwight Howard uh, looking to leave Houston and take his talent elsewhere. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that Dwight Howard should resign with Houston, or do you think it's better to let him go and wish him luck on his future endeavors? If I know NBA players, like, so far, and, I mean, we've seen different, I guess, We've just seen different scenarios and different strategies, but so far, I haven't seen anyone really turn down money unless they knew they could get more. And that's where, to me, I don't know if Dwight's leaving Houston. Even though people say, oh, he's, he's going to leave, he's unhappy, he's not getting the ball, but your offense is just not where it used to be. We talk about this all the time. You know, it just so happens that today is the beat among friends. But Dwight needs to work on his offensive game. Like, that's it. He works on the offensive game, and he's a much better player. We know who he is defensively. 
but offensively he's a liability. So you have someone like James Harden out there, you know, and I mentioned this before that you know, he went out and told uh Chandler Parsons like, Hey, you're just a role player. I got it a hundred percent. Um It it kinda it, showed it too when he went to Dallas. But you're right, it made it. perfect sense to me. It was bold to say it because you know, you just you just stepped off of being a six man in OKC. Yep. But looking at it now, he embraced the role and he's playing very well. Now, Dwight, since he's got there, don't get me wrong, great player. He's going to get you 14, 15 points a game. But my argument was, and I've had this conversation with several individuals on Twitter, we could have just kept Omer Ashik, paid $10 million less, actually went out and got ourselves a better small forward, which I originally thought we needed, maybe a better power forward. And just but went you off. have like ten forwards on your team, though. So I mean, well, we have ten forwards on our team now, but before we didn't have ten forwards on our team. We had maybe three or four. You know what I mean? But we we wouldn't have had all those forwards. We would have had somebody of quality. You know, maybe. And again, I've even said this. Maybe Lamarcus Aldridge does come to Houston if Dwight's not there. Lamarcus Aldridge and Omer Ashik would have worked together. Yep. You know, I can Lamar- definitely agree with that. Yeah, because Lamarcus Aldridge and freaking Dwight, that doesn't work. No, because they both want to pack the paint. They both want to do stuff. But at the same time, too, Amiro Ashik doesn't demand the ball. He doesn't. And it allows, you know, L.A. to go out there and do what he does. I mean, he's doing what he's doing right now for the Spurs, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit, too. Yeah. So, you know, let's just leave it at that. Let's continue on. Let's talk a little bit about the Los Angeles Clippers. Yes, the Los Angeles Clippers are they are an unbelievable team. I don't know what they're going to do. I, I I don't know. I don't like the general makeup of the team, but I just know that Doc's not going to get a long much longer time to actually build, you know, continue working on his team. And that's something that uh he has to really work on. Yeah, so you know, they just got finished losing their series, um, but it was kind of collateral damage because on one hand, uh, you know, there was a pretty, I wouldn't say even standings, but there was okay standings against the uh, Portland Trailblazers, but then they had literally on the same night and within minutes apart from each other, you know, two horrific injuries and, you know, we both wish the best for Chris Paul and Blake Griffin, speedy recovery for them. But for them to go down, it wasn't just demoralizing for the team. It definitely turned the tides of the entire um, series. So, you know, that being regarded, I mean, it's just been a up and down year for them. Uh, you know, the whole Blake, the whole Blake Griffin issue uh, with him fighting one of the staff members for the cup for the. For them, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, I don't think Doc is going to be there for that much longer. He might have one more year. I'm pretty sure Chris Paul's going to want to definitely play for a contender, play with one of his friends. Uh, there's been talk about him uh, going out there and taking his talents to Cleveland, which will also beg the question of what's going to happen to Kyrie Irving. Well, Kyrie Irving has already said that he, um, I don't know, like, he doesn't, I, I think he just has a problem with LeBron. He might have liked David Blatt. That's all, for all we know, he liked David Blatt, and he liked the way things were set up. I mean, to me, it doesn't make sense to fire the coach after going to the finals. Yeah, absolutely. I and, mean, and how many times in NBA history have we seen, you know, a coach that took a team to the NBA finals? Like, we're not talking about the conference finals. Shout out to right. Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale. We're talking about the finals. Like, I you agree. had a 2-1 lead in the finals until, you, you know, I mean, we, we all know what happened, so I'm not going to go into details about that. But, well, when you think about it now, I mean, David Blatt, if, if LeBron said, hey, he don't, know, he don't know what to do out of timeouts, and he's got me inbounding the ball, and I'm supposed to be taking the ball up, and, you know, LeBron is just uncoachable at this time. You know, he's got to be the man. In which, partially, he's deserved the right to do so. But at the same time, I mean, 
you got to have some respect for the authority there. And I don't see how Tyron Lu, such a dominant figure. I think mm-hmm. he's just a pawn right now in this masterful game of chess. And LeBron is the king. And there's a whole bunch of, you know, I hate to call Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love queens, but, well, you know, well, I guess. I, I'll probably, I'll probably do use chess terms, probably call them rooks. Yeah, see, you know, I guess it's LeBron. I think everyone else is pretty much like pawns. Pawns. A lot of pawns. And, you know, and Tyrone Lue is just an addition. I mean, but as far as Chris Paul goes, if you trade Chris Paul for Kyrie Irving, and Kyrie Irving goes to the Clippers, I mean, I think that would make... Hmm... I, think, I don't think I don't think that'll work though. I mean, I, I I know where you're trying to go with that, but I mean, let's just look at it for how it is. Like Kyrie Irving, at least with his time with the Cavaliers, is a defensive liability. Okay, yes, that's what I'm thinking. But and I mean, Chris I was Paul gonna... isn't a defensive liability. I was gonna go the other way and say that Kyrie Irving would probably serve as a better offensive weapon. Because when you think about it, in Cleveland, defensively, as a whole, they don't really have that intimidating defensive presence. I mean, Mozgov was there, a little shout out to Mozgov, but he's no freaking, no. you know what I mean? Like, no, that's don't, what I'm saying. Even, you remember no. the term Mozgov? <laughs> he has his own term out there because yeah, he so. got dunked on by Blake Griffin when he was a member of my New York Knicks. Shame. Shout out to the Knicks. Shout out to the Bill. New York Knicks. Please Bill give Jackson. us the right coach, please. Thank you. Yes. Most likely it's going to be Blatt. I'm thinking most likely it's going to be Blatt. I'm going to plead the fifth because I have strong hope. Uh, Melo is looking to, you know, try to help us win, and I believe in Melo. Um, I told you this before. Uh, despite what people may say about him, I think he probably had one of the most consistent seasons that he had in his whole career. The I'm going to tell you right now. Do, the things that people argued about him, he did. So there wasn't really too much they can say negatively about him. Yeah. It's just, you know, the team had a lot of injuries and stuff like that. Like, we was on pace to make the playoffs. Indeed. I mean, but I'll just say that I think if the Knicks hire Black, Carmelo will call LeBron and say, tell me everything you know about Black. Will I like this? Will I not like this? And then he might have a preconceived notion that he doesn't like him because LeBron didn't like him. Well, I'm not going to lie. You heard me say this before, and I'm going to be controversial for a second. But uh, in my perfect world, LeBron James does not join the New York Knicks. Oh, definitely not. No, I don't think LeBron. I don't think LeBron's leaving Cleveland again. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. You're getting it twisted. Good, sir. Yeah. I'm saying that I don't want him on the Knicks, but I can see him leaving the Cavaliers. No, I don't think he's leaving the Cavaliers. I think... Kyrie Irving might leave the Cavaliers. I think Kevin Love might leave the Cavaliers. I don't think Kevin Love's going to leave the Cavaliers. I think and he here's can, why. I think he can still get paid more money. He can still get paid more money, but he's not a superstar. He's At not. To the level that he was in Minnesota. Big fish in a small pond. On a bad team. Big fish in a small pond. I mean, if he would have stayed there, I mean, I can't even imagine where they would be right now, but... Then again, they probably wouldn't have, you know, some of the players that they have now. So, I don't know. Everything happens. Wiggins? A few people. Wiggins. Oh, yeah, Wiggins. Imagine if Wiggins and LeBron, or well, I guess it wouldn't have been Wiggins and LeBron. It would. I guess it would have been Wiggins yeah, and LeBron. Because he would have played the two. They would have made him play the two. And that would have just or been so. if not so... that, they probably would have been, you know, probably played a little bit more small and put LeBron at the four. And that would have been just so much more. I think that would have been more effective than what they have now. Uh, I actually agree. Yeah, because I think if you put LeBron at the four, similar to like what my Knicks did and put Melo at the four, you know, he could do a lot more damage. Yeah. Because Ah. let's let's just let's just look at it like this. Like we're just waiting to see who's gonna win in the West between the Spurs and the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, that's who's I think that's who wins the championship. Because we already know who is coming out the East. Yes. Unless somehow Miami trumps and yes, I use that term. On purpose. Well, Trump's the Cavaliers and managed to shock the world. They make it to the finals. 
it would be the all Cavaliers up to Dwayne Wade. are going to the NBA Finals. Yeah, it would be We're all up to Dwayne Wade. Which one of the future NBA champions between the San Antonio Spurs and the Golden State Warriors are going to meet them there? Well, I saw yesterday that, well, we saw last week, speaking of the playoffs, which is next on our agenda, which is perfect. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs now. Now, the one thing that you seen last week, well, I guess this week and last week, you saw a chink in the armor of the Spurs and a chink in the armor yesterday, even though they won the game still, and the Golden State Warriors. Now, the Warriors, and I told my wife that, I said, well, let me look to see why the Golden State Warriors are losing right now. You know, I don't know if she was listening or not, but I was like, well, let me go look at the stats. Do you know whose stats I went to look for? Draymond Green. You mean Mr. Triple Double? Because I mean he's been balling, but he's I don't the, think he I don't think he did as well last night. But I well, know. he didn't start that way. But when they made their run, he started playing pretty well. And that's the guy I look for because when Houston won their game, we shut Draymond Green down, and he's the X factor. It's not Clay Thompson because I think Clay Thompson, without without Steph Curry there, Clay struggles to carry the load. So when I, you know, when they say Splash Brothers, if it's just one splash, they're not. He's not. It's not making a big ripple. Is that what you're trying to say? The big wave <laughs> that the team needs. Because it's like he'll score 18 to 20 points, great, but the team needs 25 to 30 points from one of the Splash Brothers. And well, I mean, he did score, I believe, 37 points. And that's and that's what I'm saying. That's great, but. In the beginning of the game, he was not on pace to do that. I think he oh, was. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. he wasn't playing well. But so. then we also knew, too, that the Portland Trailblazers was going to come out there swinging. Well, the like, let's just be is honest. Like, like, they got hurt that first game. They're in an interesting position. And, and that's why I think, going back to Dwight, Dwight could fit there, but I know they have some young players like Miles Leonard, and um, I know they have some other young bigs there. I don't know if Dwight would fit there, especially with what they said that. Uh, you know, that Damian Lillard took the guys out. You know, they let's go to the beach guys and let's go hang out and be brothers and friends. I don't know if Dwight's, I mean, even though he's still young at heart, I mean, he's our age, so I know he's that not old. Funny. <laughs> but he's just like, almost like a big baby. Metaphor yeah. and yeah. fake. I, I, in fact, we actually talked about that too, and I did mention that comment that he is someone who, and, and we're going back, you know, in history. Yeah. You know, without upbringing watching basketball, like we had like the nasty, to to quote Greg Popovich, he would know. I want to see some nasty. Bring yeah. the nasty. He would have been crying. You know, we we got some crying. nasty sinners that would you know be bruisers. He would have been crying playing against Shaq and playing against Patrick Ewing and Olajuwon for eighty two games. He would have never made it. Or, or the dream, if you got your boy the dream. No, that's not Elijah Wan. He would have been. That's what I'm saying. He would have been or in even, trouble. Even Alonzo Mourning. Exactly. I mean, just imagine playing yeah. against these guys. Yeah. Even not even the center, like he'll be crying because of people like Anthony Mason. Right, big <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Ben. Like he would have been. He would have had a problem. That's true. And uh, so, first of all, uh, sorry to hear about the whole Anthony Mason thing. So yes, you know, just to rest shut in that peace, up. Anthony Mason. I mean, what a great player he was, though. He really, was. he really was. And that was during the days when, you know, I used to go to my uncle's house and we would, uh, he would always have the Knicks on and the Yankees on and he would just flip back and forth. And I mean, I never really liked the Yankees. I only watched the Knicks because he watched the Knicks. My dad's a Knicks fan. But to me, the Knicks over time, and this is the only thing I've always said about the Knicks, is that they never, ever, ever replaced those guys that made them so good. So it was like I completely agree with when, you. You know, I when completely Ewing completely agree. Yeah, when Ewing left, I think they tried Marcus Camby. But Marcus Camby was good. He just didn't he wasn't the offensive juggernaut as that Ewing Patrick was. Ewing. Right. So when, you know, Anthony Mason and Charles Oakley left, you know, there was a lack at power forward for a very long time. You know, you had your Allen Houstons, your John Starks. I mean, it just took them a long time to to bring those people in. I mean, we've seen a lot of point guards from, you know, when they had freaking Hopper, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, you know, they haven't had the same success. We need those bad boy Knicks back. Well, I mean, granted, when the last time we had a bad boy any team? Hmm, a bad boy 
team. Since, you know, let's say 2000. Oh, the last time we had a bad boys team. The only the only team I could think of is probably the Detroit Pistons. Yeah, and I was going to say the Indiana Pacers, you know, Ron Artest. Ron Artest, you know, had that game, you know, not – I just think Ron, any team that Ron Artest was on, you were going to get a, a problem. I think those Lakers team with Kobe, Shaq, Artest, or Kobe, Shaq, and uh, maybe not Rick Fox, but, you know, <laughs> but when – you know, because Kobe embodied that particular spirit from the 90s because he was from the 90s. You know, that 96 to 2000, he had a chance to play against some of those guys, so – you know, playoffs for them was like, hey, if I got to punch you, I'm going to punch you. Absolutely. You know, that's what we need. But this playoffs is so weird because, you know, some of these teams, it's so lopsided. And that's why I was saying, and I read this in an article yesterday or on Twitter about the MVP voting. And, you know, the writer was saying, well, the Warriors are so good. And if the MVP vote is for the person who impacts the team, not overall, but impacts the team the most, Absolutely. How, can, how can you give it to Steph Curry? And that was the conversation that he was having on Twitter. And, of course, you know, those Golden State Warrior fans, oh, you salty, bro? You mad, bro? <laughs> you mad, bro? And, you know, we're not. he wasn't saying James Harden or anything, but he was just saying, like, hey, let's look at Kevin Durant or – Let's look at, you know, Kawhi Leonard or someone else that, you do, know. Do you believe I, that Kawhi Leonard is a potential MVP, though, this year? He does a lot for that team, man. I was about to say, because I would say he is. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because I'm a huge, uh, you know, Kawhi Leonard fan. Cause I he, yeah, he's but big. But, like, yeah. that kid, I'm just saying. He's going to be one of the best in the league. That's why uh, he is one of the best in the league. He is one of the best in the league. Not even going to be. He is one of the best in the league at what he does. He... And I heard this on, you know, after they beat the Grizzlies, actually. Mm -hmm. And I forgot who it was, but they said that Kawhi Leonard is the best two-way player in the game right now. He is, because he can play defense. And that's the only thing about Paul George. Because I think if Paul George didn't get hurt and he was able to work through that summer, I think we would be talking about him and Kawhi Leonard in the same sentence. Probably would... I don't know. Maybe it is time for him to, to seek a different team. You know, the Pacers are good with him because of him, but I just don't know if Larry Bird has the ability to create a winning team. And um, that's something that I would I would definitely question. But as far as in the playoffs, I mean, Kawhi Leonard, obviously, and the whole Spurs organization, Pop, Greg Pop just makes it easy for them. Like, the GM... The GM made it easy. I mean, you're talking about 12 to 15 players on that roster. 12 out of 15 could yep. probably be a minimum of a six-man on another team. So, to me, that shows that a, a team has been built with great leadership. And the Warriors are good, too. But I think that the Spurs, having Kevin Martin, like, number 9 and 10 on your bench, that's amazing. But I told you that, though. I told you that they got Kevin Martin and Andre Miller. That's a lot. That's a lot to deal with. Like, and then they still have, uh, what's his name, David West on the bench as well, too. David West. And Boris Diaw. And did you like, see? Like, that within itself is, you know, three, four years ago, maybe yeah. even five years ago, that's a starting five potentially right there. It really is. And did you see yesterday uh, Maurice Spates? missed like nine shots in a row and I was like usually he's money but the reason why I bring him up is because I would like to see him and David West go at it for a little bit because they have a similar game and I just it would just be interesting to see those two guys go at it on the bench but the Warriors I don't see how they're going to match up against the Spurs even though they've matched up several times and I think Warriors would just outrun the Spurs. That would be the only way to beat them because LaMarcus Aldridge can beat Draymond Green or yes. Andrew. Well, he could just shoot over Draymond Green. Right. So Bogut would have to cover 
you know, LaMarcus Aldridge. I wouldn't say that because then Tim Duncan's going to be the one defend, uh, who has to be defended. Uh, well, Draymond Green's going to have to defend Tim Duncan. I'm sorry. I'm saying my words incorrectly. But Tim Duncan is, you know, he, he's older and he's slower and well, hey. He can still get on the foul line. I'm he just, can. He can. D- despite all that, he can, he can no, still get to the can. foul line. Yep. And the last yep. thing the Warriors need in the Western Conference Finals is for Draymond Green to be in constant foul trouble. That's true. Well, I mean, the playoffs are going to continue, and I, I think that the games are going to continue to be good. I'm hoping that they clean up the OKC and uh, Spurs series. Yeah, I think they're going to close. I think they're going to call that one a lot more close to the vest. Uh, the next game coming up. Yeah, but speaking were, of yeah. playoffs, though, I have a score alert. Um, debates among friends. If there is a game coming on uh, during that time, we will give you a score alert uh, whenever we can. So right now we are at halftime with the Cavaliers up. 74 to 38 over the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, my God. <laughs> For those that didn't hear me, I'll say that again. The Cavaliers are up at halftime, 74 points to the Hawks, 38. Wow. Wow. That's unbelievable. So, people who think that the Hawks are going to make this a series, all I have to say is... <laughs> <laughs> it's time. Come on, we gotta, you got to admit, it's time for them to to split. Like It's time for them to make some changes. Oh, absolutely. It's, absolutely. Just not, it's just not working. It's not working. It's time for them. Enough! It's enough! It's time to make a change! Shout out to Owen Hart. Owen Hart. Hart. But I mean, I mean, that's that's the playoffs in a nutshell. So, I mean, I think we can move on from the playoffs because that's it. That, that, that number right there, that shouldn't happen in the NBA. That shouldn't happen. Not, not for the playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs? I'm not talking about the playoffs. I just want one in the game. So speaking of winning another game, well, first of all, uh, we have to sponsor our unofficial official sponsor for debates among friends is brought to you by Not Your Father's Ginger Ale. Not uh, your get at father's your local, ginger ale. Get at your local grocery store is quite delicious. If you haven't tried it before, definitely give it a try. Uh, they also have Not Your Father's root beer as well too. So uh, definitely pick it up one day at your local grocery store and uh, give it a try. Shout out to Small Town Brewery for putting together these. This Beautiful, beautiful adult alcoholic beverage that, I mean, when I heard the root beer, first of all, I don't like root beer, so I was just like, I'm not trying that. When I was in the store, my wife had actually went away for a weekend, and I said, oh, I want to try a new beer. I'm tired of, you know, Coors Light, but like, you know, Coronas, so on and so forth, Presidentes, and all those kind of things. It's only fun find something new. So, I saw the root beer, and I said, eh. and one of my friends had had, you know, they had one. And they asked me if I wanted one. I was like, no, because I don't like root beer. I already said that. But I saw the ginger ale. And I said, that sounds like that might be pretty good. Made with real ginger. So, I mean. Which is always better. Yeah, I mean, real ginger. And I, I not, knew not immediately. Not that watered down stuff. I'm just saying. And it, it, it really tastes stronger than it is. A lot of people, when I tell people, they say, that sounds weird. But I said, this thing is pretty good. And I, I knew immediately. I said, I'm going to have to start buying two cases because I knew my wife was going to really, really love it. And did she really love it? I have doctor, to, did, did your wife love it, doctor? I have to split the, I have to split the six pack with her every time. <laughs> so now I have to, you know, figure out a way to, you know, not buy them on my own, but me, I'm going to have to get two packs because, you know, you need six of those things. I'm sorry because they're really, really good. But speaking of that playoffs and trying to win another game moving on to the next segment where we talk about a little bit about the draft not too much because it was just really really crazy you know the first couple of picks i'm on twitter tweeting and you know i'm trying to figure out like hey you know maybe who are the cowboys gonna take are the cowboys gonna take easy e or are they gonna take ramsey and i was almost positive up and down would have shaved the beard off I actually shaved the beard already. I see. I see. I, 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 don't, remember, I don't remember what the agreement was when you said it. There was no agreement. I just shaved it off. Oh, you just shaved it off. I, I don't just know. shaved it off. My wife gets mad when I shave mine off, so I don't even I don't even do it, as you can see here. But Yeah, un- unfortunately, the people uh, sometimes like it when the hair grows, and sometimes they don't like it when the hair doesn't grow when I shave it off. So I Yeah. Mean, it's just I, one of those things, man. I understand. Mine has been growing in pretty good. I don't know. It ha- yeah, I mean, it's it's a weird thing. I'm hoping that it grows a little longer than this, but if it doesn't, I'm good with this. Um, but 
but back to your point about the draft. And by the way, people, if you want to follow the doctor on Twitter, uh, he is at at T L double. Yep. And I am also at at Ken eighty six. So if you want to follow us, uh, those are our address. Once again, it is for the doctor at T L double, and I am at Ken eight six. And that's K I N K is in kite. I is an indigo, N as in Nancy. But the draft was interesting. I I watched most of the first round, and then I think we moved on to one of our favorite TV shows because I just wanted to see who the Bucks drafted. And I figured we wouldn't move up or move down or move around after we picked. But I was just so excited because I had been on Twitter talking to a lot of the sports writers who write for the Buccaneers. And, you know, the one thing I kept saying was, I really hope that we traded down maybe not once, not twice. Not three times, not four times, not five times, but as many times as possible to acquire some additional picks. So when I saw that we traded down, I said, you know what, that's great. We probably could have traded down one more time and still got the corner that we wanted. And if we didn't, we could have traded down some more and and still got the players that we wanted. Um, Because the controversial pick, of course, for Tampa was the kicker in the second round, which they traded back up into the second round for, which I understood. I mean, there are so many games that we lost because of kicking. And if this guy has is perfect within 40 yards, I can live with his record outside of 40 because the extra point, which is that, you know, which is at the 30, 35 yard line right now, these guys were missing. And it's like, I can't have you missing these extra points because this is costing us the game. So, I mean, there are a lot of good draft picks. There are a lot of good teams that got that got really better. Uh, I'm just looking forward to another productive football season. Absolutely. So, speaking of the draft still, uh, what was your surprise of the night? I mean, it would have to have been the kicker. <laughs> I, mean, dra- I mean, I know we liked him a lot. So, for me, them drafting the kicker was the biggest, the biggest thing. Um, I, I, I think I met the draft overall, but... Well, no, that's what I'm saying. The overall, like, I was shocked by the pick. Um, I mean, you know, the first two picks, I was like, oh, man, quarterbacks, we knew that. No, yeah, of course. Joey Bosa to the Chargers was kind of interesting because Joey Bosa is more of a 4-3 defensive end than a stand-up linebacker, so I'm interested to see how they're going to use them uh, or use him in, in their lineup. But you think they're going to try to convert him over? Oh, he'll definitely be probably a stand-up linebacker. Um, I can't see them. I can't see him being a, a, a defensive end in the three-four scheme. Um, the Cowboys drafting Easy E wasn't. And if people don't know, that is Ezekiel Elliott. Please, thank you very much. Of course, of course. But maybe we, maybe the surprise was the quote-unquote rise and fall of the tackle Tunsil. Of Tunsil, yes. Yes, uh, 10 minutes before the draft started, uh, Instagram, was it Instagram? I think it was. Yeah, it was Instagram. Was it? I thought uh, it was Instagram cool. post came up of him um, smoking a substance with a gas mask on. Which is uh, We're not going to go too much in details about what that was, but. That's crazy. You know, it's just a lot of stories coming out with him. Uh, you know, he has a past and all this other stuff. Um you know, it's just unfortunate that it happened at this time. Um, You're talking about right you know, before the draft, man. Literally right before the draft. Like, it's one of those things, like, like a good example would be if it's your high school graduation. And, and this is a scaled down version, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. If it's your high school graduation and you have to make a speech on stage. And all of a sudden, five minutes before you have to make this speech... Not only does your gown get ripped, but somehow it starts raining because it's outside and your entire speech is all soggy. Like, you're just sitting there just petrified like, what am I going to do now? Like, your life is flashing for your eyes and all this other stuff. Like, I mean, I could only imagine how, you know, how much his heart was racing. Like, even when he was doing the conference after he got selected, and I think they said it was like 20 minutes of him talking like he is drinking water he is sweating profusely like you knew like there's something bigger going on than just like 
hey, you know, he's a stupid kid and he just made another stupid decision. Like, something else is going on. And I think, you know, in the upcoming weeks, heading into, like, the OTAs and stuff like that, we're going to figure out, you know, we're going to learn more and more about stuff like that, too. So we'll definitely cover that. It wasn't... We we didn't think about what... Because, you know, my wife and I, we watched, the, like I said, the draft together. shout out to the doctor's wife. Yes, the doctor's wife. We didn't think about his actions. We thought about how his mom felt. How did, you know, how did your mom feel? Like, you know, because these guys, you know, they're living their dreams. You know, this is a dream come true to be drafted in the NFL. You put all this work in, you know, all this training, and you're doing all this stuff. Absolutely. And then you get to the day where your dreams are about to come true, and something comes out that says, Hey, maybe I'm not the guy who you thought I was. That's a terrible, terrible feeling. It is. So we were thinking about like the parents and you know how his mom probably feels with him, you know, doing making bad choices. And we, you know, these are young kids, so we get it. But you know, this is the part where it's like, hey, you're a man now. Look at Johnny Manziel and see if you want that lifestyle because that's where you're going if you don't get it together. Absolutely, absolutely. Not everybody I know we're gets... starting to run a little bit low on time, so we're going to head up to the next subject. Uh, we're okay. going to talk a little bit about the WWE. And um, I'm showing here that, you know, we were scheduled to talk a little bit about the quote-unquote Bullet Club member. Or the Ballot Club, however they want to try to, you know, promote this. Um, so the concept that what everyone, uh, what the people believe, and, you know, we're all the voice of the people. Mm-hmm. You know, everyone believed that at the first pay per view, uh, Payback, we would see the debut of the. Well, we're just gonna call it the club because we don't know how they're gonna try to call it. Um, Can they call it the Bullet Club legally? And, and that's the part because, like, even when um, Doc and Anderson uh, debuted, like, they called it Finisher the Magic Killer, and it was kind of weird because AJ Styles' submission uh, finisher was called the Calf Killer, and then they switched over, like. So it's kind of weird, like, mm. they're, they're kind of flip floppity as far as what they want to try to do. Mm. But pretty much everyone believed that the club was going to debut. Uh, everyone believed that, you know, AJ's boys was going to portray him. And somehow Finn Balor would make his debut as well, too, yeah. uh, during the championship bout. And it didn't happen. It, it, definitely it didn't did. happen. In fact, I actually put my beard on the line to say that <laughs> if there was a betrayal. No, yeah. it was, if there was no betrayal and AJ Styles was to win the title, I would shave off my beard. And then you I shaved off my beard anyway, so that's... Oh that's my fine. god, come on, man. But there was no betrayal, there was nothing, it just... It was a fizzle and a small little baby pop. It was just nothing more than a few sparks. I mean, what do you expect, friend, when your buddy Roman Reigns is head in charge? Anyone but you, Roman. Anyone but you, you. And they should have ran with that. Like th- that would have been a perfect time to reignite that feud and get Bray Wyatt the title. Um, yeah, unfortunately, his window of opportunity is like closing. See, you know, and, and and he's hurt again. Unfortunately, too, yeah. because he's a he's a heck of a character. He's a heck of a talent in the ring. You know, he just can't get a break right now, and it's sad. If it was you me, know? I would have had. When Roman Reigns first won the title, I would have had, instead of Sheamus having won that Money in the Bank, I think you got to let Bray win it. Even though they didn't know, you know, of course they didn't know that, uh, you know, Seth Rollins was going to get hurt. Unless he didn't get hurt and they're just playing it off to give him a chance to get some rest. But giving it to Bray and him cashing in the Money in the Bank at... I think that was WrestleMania. No, that wasn't WrestleMania. Hmm. Where would Sheamus? Where did Sheamus cash in his money in the bank? I thought it was SummerSlam. It might have been SummerSlam. It was SummerSlam, and I think if Bray Wyatt would have cashed it in, it would have been a lot bigger than Sheamus because nobody believed Sheamus was gonna be champ. No one. No one. Well, I mean, Sheamus hasn't been relevant since what 2011. Don't don't even answer that question. Yeah. It's, rhetorical. it's to- totally fine. It's totally yeah. Fine. But speaking about anyone but you, Roman. Anyone but you. 
Uh, what do you think about, you know, the whole effort to try to still make him a baby face and they kind of try to make him heal, then they try to make him baby face again, and then they also mute the crowd noise and make sure that people don't hear them do, like, the WrestleMania, they completely mute the crowd. And that right there was not the greatest thing. Not the greatest It was not the best thing for business. Not the greatest thing. I I mean, night after night after that, uh... You would see signs in the audience about people saying, don't mute the mic. You know, we we paid to be here. We want our voice to be heard kind of thing. Like, yeah, it was crazy. I, it was quite the roller coaster. I mean, to me, I think that and I, I read something, I think, yesterday or the day before yesterday where Triple H was saying he doesn't know why the fans don't like him, you know, but. He basically said, oh, the fans are going to like some people. The fans are not going to like some people. But, you know, we just have to continue doing business. And to me, it's only thing that makes it bad is that there are so many people who the fans really, really do like. And it's like, give those people a chance. Like, some people, hey, some people really might like Roman. I think I saw a few comments where they was like, you know, Roman sucks. And there's like one lone person would say, no, he doesn't. So, I mean, there might be one out of every uh, 25 uh, people that might like him or 30, you know, whatever the number is. I just don't think he's polished enough to be the champ. I mean. I agree with that. I, I don't think he's ready. That. Like, give you it know, to somebody else. I would else. say, like, and, and we talked about this, too. Like, there's a lot of talent on the main roster right now. I think the only other person, the only person that I could consider that would have been a perfect champ at this time and they really could have used all of the angles that they had him in to push him forward is Bray Wyatt. Absolutely. That's it. Like, and a close second to me is um, Kevin Owens. See, Kevin Owens just got there. And I, I don't know. I think they're still confused with how to to run his character. Absolutely. I think that's why it's not coming across. I don't know if they like it. I think they're just letting him do his thing. But it's so... I don't want to say bland, but I it think... It is bland. It is bland. It is bland. I know he's being himself, and, you know, not he might not be being himself, but I know he's trying to be this, hey, you know, I don't care about you or anyone else attitude, but it just comes across as blah, where you have people going above and beyond, like Bray Wyatt, you know, and really have a genuine following. Absolutely. I don't want to hear Kevin Owens come on and complain for 20 minutes. That's whack. So, that's my I mean, opinion. We, we kind of have to deal with that every single Monday night on Raw, though. Yeah, Where, you, you, you know, do. Someone is out there talking for, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. And it's clear that they don't want to give him the IC title back. So, it's like, why even have him fighting for these matches? Like, they want Cesaro. I think they want Cesaro to have it. Um, then why, why didn't he just win it at Payback, then? Who's that? Cesaro? Yeah. I think it's because they wanted to give... The Miz a chance for some reason, or maybe they're building for something else because there's no possible way that the Miz should have beat Cesaro. I completely agree. I completely agree. But now we're gonna end up having a fatal four way. Yeah. At the next at the next pay per view, Extreme Bulls. Hopefully, it's you know, an elimination. We really didn't so. talk a whole lot about payback. And speaking of payback, uh, we also have to talk about. The, you know, tragic injury to uh, Enzo Amore, uh, oh, our boys. Uh, he went down pretty badly. Um, Realist guys he, in the room. He looked like he's making a great recovery. He's out the hospital on Monday. Uh, taking, you know, there's pictures out there of him uh, posing. I did see that. But, I mean, let, let's talk about that, though. I mean, the tag team division. You know, you, you talked about how certain people were becoming through and you know whether or not they made to make an immediate impact and do so much gotcha and and do so much um you know once they get in there like the vaude villains you know and i was pretty big on them when they was in nxt so you said you know what i don't think their their act is going to translate well into the main roster i don't think it's going to last long i think it's like they were really controversial actually when the the promo that they all did together where the New Day was introducing this tournament and actually no it wasn't a tournament it was after they had already won and it was the Von Villains versus Enzo and Cass and um, they said well we're going to take it back to where it's 1895 
and I'm looking around like, hmm, 1895, yeah, about and, that. And, and I heard this on a different podcast as well, too, and, and I definitely agree. I think people don't like them, and they're booing them because their act is so old. It is. That they don't know how to feel about stuff, they'll just boo. And I think that makes them a, a good a good opportunity to make them heels. Um I mean, like I said, the one thing I like about them is they are creative and they, they have a great move set. And I know that was one of the things that, you know, we were going to talk about, their move sets. And their moves are original and fresh. I like them. Um, they work well together. And that's the one thing I do like about them. Is they uh, I would definitely really say really this, well. though, and, and I'm going to cut you off real quick. Don't you be cut. Their, their in-ring psychology yeah. is very good. So if you was to watch the eight man tag team match mm-hmm. on Monday Night Raw. Yeah. And to watch the way that you know Aiden English performed in the ring. Yeah. And the way that he interacted with people. The way that he talked to the Dudleys. His own you know partners in the match. Like it showed big things for this tag team. Yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of over the Dudley. So I'm hoping that one of these tag teams can really step it up and you know really get things going. Uh, we'll see. I'm sorry, I just watched a, I just read a funny tweet uh, talking about the Cavaliers saying, if the Cavaliers didn't make any threes, the Atlanta Hawks would be in this game. Wow. That's so, terrible. Yeah, that, that was just happened. I'm sorry. That, that, please continue. No, but that... Yeah, um, and, you know, your boy, you know, Colin Cassidy, you know, when he came into the ring on Monday... Uh-oh. And, and you talked about this on his debut when he, went, when he went into the ring, how he came in there with such authority. Yeah, he climbed over yeah, that he, he did the same thing on Monday, and I was like, just give him a, you know, WWE Championship match. Like, forget the tag team stuff. Like, that was just powerful. But you did but say he, that he, he needed a new move. For him. He needed a new finisher. He does need a new finisher, unfortunately. It's basically it's a sidewalk slam. I, yeah. I think he could do something a little bit more. I think he could do a little bit more. Um, I mean, heck, as much as I dislike this move, I think it'd probably work better with him. Like, Wade Barrett's Wasteland Yeah. would probably be a pretty good finisher for him. Like, it would be pretty strong. And Wade Barrett's gone now, right? So Wade Barrett is definitely gone. Uh, oh. They rid him off TV. Um, everyone knew that he was leaving. He'd probably show up on Ring of Honor. Hey. Not that, Lee, Not that and Jay Lee. Not that Pissant Jay Lee. definitely one of the best wrestlers. You know, I think he was wrestler of the year uh, last year, actually. Because he's so electrified. You know, he's just incredible in the ring. And, you know, that's just him paying his dues and doing everything that he needs to do. I mean, he had such an epic promo when he was still with TNA. Mm-hmm. With... The nature, the nature the second boy. nature boy. Woo! And that's about Buddy hey, Rogers. Don't you start. The nature boy, Ric Flair. Yeah. And, and it's actually one of our favorite promos. One of our, I mean, my we, favorite we promo. Actually, I mean, my goodness. We tend to recite pretty much that whole promo. Such like, great whenever we talk to each other on the phone, like, we literally say that as a greeting. It's so, so crazy. It's literally incredible. If you haven't had the chance, I mean, look it up on YouTube. It's literally everywhere. It's Jay really? Lethal and Ric Flair. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, we're running a little bit more uh, down on time. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the evolution or de-evolution of wrestling real quick. And don't worry about it, folks. Uh, this is going to be a weekly podcast. And once again, we are unofficially, officially sponsored by Not Your Father's Ginger Ale. Uh, so if you get a chance, uh, get it at your local store. Uh, this is uh, made by Small Town Brewery. So, uh, Doctor, let's talk a little bit about the evolution, the evolution of wrestling moves. Well, we, I talk- mean, we talked about how certain moves when we were growing up were so strong that no one kicked out. Now we have moves that everyone kicks out of. Well, and yes, we are talking about anyone but you, John Cena. That's true. I mean, we're talking about things like John Cena's moves, the super kick. Uh, you know, we can't see any more power bombs, any more spears. Um, no one's really doing anything original or new or, like, really powerful, you know. And I don't know if that's the strategy or what, but we just need a new, we need a new breed of moves. Like, they need to just go back to the list of not, you know, disallowed and say, hey, you know, maybe we should reconsider some of these things because some of these moves, like Roman Reigns doing a Superman punch is, like, 
Oh and my! It's the equivalent of Big Show doing the weapon of mass destruction. Yes, it's so angry. dumb. And the spear is even worse, being that Charlotte does a spear. We all, I mean, the spear has just lost its flavor over the years since Goldberg did it. No, absolutely. Rhino, absolutely. remember Rhino and Goldberg and all these people did it. You know, Rhino, you know, one of the best spears ever, and it made sense. This one, yes. this one doesn't make sense. Well, actually, and, and we're gonna, you know, get ready to call it a podcast in a few, uh, in like another minute. Actually, uh, it's funny because one of your favorite finisher moves, the F five, is now not as strong because a woman does it, a female wrestler or a knockout does it in uh, TNA. Actually, her name is Jade. So if you haven't had the chance, Doctor, I mean, definitely look her up. I mean, she's actually really talented, and her finishing move is the F5. Well, um, I mean, really quickly, I don't think it's what the F5 is that is not strong, but what the issue is that he does 16 suplexes before that F5. So that's what makes He does 16 suplexes. 16 of the same suplexes, unfortunately, too. (laughs) You know, we'll definitely talk about that probably the next podcast as well. Yes. Um, Talking about who is... The best wrestler to do suplexes. But, ladies and gentlemen, we are running out of time. Uh, once again, tune in next time. Uh, we're going to try to do this every single Wednesday. Um, you can check us out on Facebook under uh, Debates Among Friends. Or you go to Facebook.com slash Debates Among Friends. And we are on Mixler. Uh, we're going to do this uh, every single week. Definitely tune in next time. Uh, and we'll see you. Right, we'll see you. Wow.